The world is filled with many strange and fascinating creatures, with one of the odd features of this world being mimicry. Mimicry is a complex adaptation, where a species imitates another species to gain an advantage. There's copious amounts of different types of mimicry to achieve unique advantages, but one of the most fascinating types of mimicry is Batesian. Batesian mimicry is a common form of mimicry, where a non-toxic mimic imitates a toxic model through coloration, pattern, and body shape to gain an advantage in foraging, but mostly enhances the mimic's survival from predators. How are predators capable of detecting these species, though? Much how nature has adapted to create these species, the predators of these mimics have also adapted to detect them. Predators have developed determining abilities through differentiating pattern similarities, taste, and through mimic model abundance that will forever affect the mimic's evolutionary path. Color is the most visually identifying trait in nature, and used by animals to hide from predators, confuse predators, attract mates, and in the mimic and model's case, show predators they are, or appear to be, toxic. Mimics abuse this trait in order to gain predator avoidance, as by passing glance, initial perception of the mimic is of a toxic model. Predators have become smart enough, however, to see through many disguises, color being one of them. When closely examining a mimic, the slightest difference from the model can break the illusion. For great tits, no, not those ones, Paris Major the bird. They were able to distinguish between the mimic and model of artificial prey until the mimic began reaching perfect mimicry. For the bird to take a chance on attacking the organism in question, it would depend on the model's toxicity. The toxicity of the model has much to do with the predator's willingness to attack. For models with high toxicity, the cost of a predator to attack is much greater than those with lower toxicities. This means mimics of a high toxicity need to do little in appearance to gain the advantages that a mimic of a low toxicity model would. Mimics of a low toxicity must rely more on their appearance, as predators affected less by the model's toxin are more willing to investigate the mimic, creating a natural selection towards perfect mimicry as the poorer mimics are consumed. The predator's willingness to investigate isn't completely determined by the toxicity of the model, but the mimic model abundance as well. For a mimic's disguise to work, predators usually need common knowledge of the model and its toxicity. When a mimic begins to outnumber the model, the willingness of the predator to attack increases. When this happens, this endangers not only the mimic, but the model and predator as well putting the whole mimic system in jeopardy. Studies found that the minimum ratio for predators to attack is 38%, or 19 mimics to 50 models. This ratio helps maintain the relationship and influences the population as the weaker mimics are picked off. While science and researchers have made great strides in how predators detect mimics and influence their evolutionary path, there is still room for improvement. Not every predator sees the same way we do. Color and UV detection vary species to species, meaning there are still mimics out there that even we can't detect. Not only that, but there are mimics that have expanded their geographical habitat far outside their models. There is little explanation to why this is happening, but that's why we are all here. We are the future scientists that are going to answer these unanswered questions. Through difficult classes, projects, and the passion for knowledge, we will be the new spearhead to unveiling the mysteries of ourselves, nature, and the universe. It was an absolute pleasure spending this semester with you guys. I wish you all the best and good luck on those finals.